Yes. Sure. So do we have to call this meeting to order? No, this is not like that. Okay, so we don't have to say you anything. You don't have to do anything special. I think you can just say the words. We can ask the words. All right, so. All right. This can. So. <laughs> shall we start with uh, the very well printed and organized uh, junkyard uh, oh. <laughs> by uh, Mr. I'm just trying yeah. to show you what this is. What's that? You, you supply this, I supply this. Well, I know. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, so, um, well, first of all, they don't have any comments on Tom's hard work here. The only one that, um, or Tom yourself, do you want to make some comments at well, start? We, we had some email <coughs> exchange with um, Michelle, and I'm not sure where she said, she said that the uh, junkyards, it's prohibited for junkyards to expand, which I, I don't know where that says, but. Um, we have a, this provision is copied from a different municipality. So on A 8.26A 3, the area occupied by junk at any time shall not exceed by more than 10%. Mm -hmm. The area occupied by junk in a day, uh, we can just put that, right? Yes, please. Yeah, we'll just say that the area shall not be expanded or increased. I, I think that the inclusion of that um, is almost, um, it, it almost condones growth. When, it's, you yeah. know. But it's the nature of the business. If it's a junkyard, you know, you have vehicles coming in, going out, you, some, you have a, a, a high month, you have a low month. Sure. I mean, when you say expand, not as a purchasing a body of neighbors and building additional buildings. That's I see right. that one one definition of expansion, right. or should you say expansion of the inventory that is on site? I think because it's more the nature of the business. Footprint. Yeah, I think it's the area. We're just talking building, right? Oh, the area footprint. Like if he's covering whatever forty thousand square feet with junk, he can't go to forty-two thousand. I see what you're saying. But you have, you have that blurb. The blurb that's in there is the ten percent expansion. I think that... Uh, I think what the blurb does is basically... Cover so you're talking about the outdoor storage space, so the, yeah. you know, the area, the density of the lot itself being... That's being covered, right. Increased. <clears throat> right. I think this covers what you're getting at, is that there's an allowable flexibility that says you can... If you have 40,000 square feet, you can add another 400. But then, uh, I agree with Carol, I, mean, I, I just kind of copy this, but if someone starts creeping up, you know, it'll just get larger and larger. And you have a subject to renewal every year. Yeah. So every year, in the sense that yeah. you'd be able to tell if it was growth. Yeah. Okay. So as a proposal that we strike, um, uh, section in Roman uh, 8.26 Ace Roman 3. Yes, and I'll, I'll put in some languages that, that, that cannot expand. Okay. So at the bottom of that page, um, B, it says that junkyards not legally operating already um, have to first receive the recommendation of the planning board and the conservation commission. So I would I would first add um, they need a special exception by or a variance from yes. sorry yes. Um, because it's not allowed in any district right um, so they need to go to the ZBA so we should add that first but under what circumstances would a conservation commission ever condone the creation of a new junkyard I don't know but I think what we need to think if, are there others no not legally operating well, okay so are there illegal ones. I mean, um, we're talking about the guy in Rollins. It's a fine Rollins. line. You know, yeah. I guess you'd have to define that. There's a so. little stuff. Well, we have a definition on the top. It doesn't quantify it. So, I mean, if you have three or four cars that are in tough shape like he did, or five or six elements. Possibly. How many I think you could there? argue we have others. Hmm. Um, not licensed, sanctioned. Ones. Yeah. So that that would D would be that, right? Well, legally operating. 
Well, yes, ones. but you still have to add ZBA because they're never going to be legally operating. They're never going to be licensed by the select board unless they yeah. first go to the ZBA. But um, it also says may be licensed. Well, still, they, they may oh. not be licensed by the yeah, select yeah. board. Yeah, no, I am. But I, I still question the point of the Conservation Commission because, you know, um, junkyards are such a potential environmental hazard, um, even if run to, you know, um, state standards in as much as they have to. I just think that's a really fascinating idea to put that in there because it just sort of shuts the whole thing down right there. <laughs> I think it's just, it's just another bar, right, that they have to... I just think it's not an achievable But on, on, what, on what grounds would the Conservation Commission approve or deny an application? I mean, they don't have the expertise scientifically to say, like, it will affect groundwater. I mean, you'd need to have a, a scientist to do that, not a group of right. so what citizen is the goal? volunteers. I think it's just to open up to review by as many people as possible. How would it hurt? How would, hurt, how would the inclusion hurt? I just think that there's no way that a conservation commission would ever sign off on it. So if the provision is in there because it allows the potential for another junkyard to be licensed in the town, really it doesn't. It's a backhanded way to actually never allow it because, you know, although the composition of a conservation commission can vary, generally the kinds of people who would serve on a conservation commission are never going to feel as though that kind of operation is aligned with the mission of that group. So what if, I'm just going to get out here, so let's say that someone wants to put in a junkyard near a historic site in Rollinsford, wouldn't it be appropriate for the Conservation Commission to try, chime in? Is that what it's intended for? I just think that you never, ever, realistically have a Conservation Commission buy in to a junkyard because it's a hazardous environment. And I think that it's an impossible hurdle, but regardless, you still have you need DVA approval, selectmen, planning board. I mean, I think there's enough sets of eyes looking at it. To, you, you know, I think the conflict, you can, you can leave it in there. It, you, you, well, you just, I'm thinking that's, I think that's a good point. If we just get rid of B, and if we run into a, an example of um, another Rollins Road or something, it's existing, it's a land use violation. And if the guy wants to make it legal, I mean, we don't have to say in this, you have to run through the whole thing. We say if you get a variance to do it, then you have to run through this, the condition of approval by the zoning. Well, board. that's all the process anyway. So you're right that if you take it out, it just becomes what is already the known process, yeah. which is essentially the same thing yeah. without the conservation. Yeah. Um, I have to ask about, um, the definition of, uh, junkyard and, um, that material, these materials are bought, sold, and when I go to the transfer station, I mean, they don't have, you know, stuff bought and sold, yeah. but it looks like a junkyard to me. It is. So, I'm trying... <laughs> municipal, municipalities are exempt from their own ordinances. I mean, we try to do, you know, we don't want to do, do as I say, don't do as I do, but, I mean, if we have a transfer station... Why do we have to? Why do we allow junkyards? I mean, that's <laughs> my pure. Well, we really don't right? allow junkyards. You know, they're, they're not allowed in the zoning yeah. ordinance, so they only exist currently as a non-conforming use. So there is quite a hurdle for another one to ever become allowed in that they have to get a variance from the ZBA. Uh -huh. So there's already that hurdle. I mean, they could call themselves a second-hand shop and clean up. I, I well, sound very oh, well. Let me say this. It is good. <laughs> it is good, but as you know, if they're getting close to, I think that's why it says all this about bought and sold and stored, yeah. failed, yeah. and whatnot. Um, you know, if it, if it looks like you're operating like a junkyard and you're not, then then that that offers us the opportunity to enforce it as a um, non-licensed junkyard. Oh, okay. So the definition is important so that, you know, I guess it would align with housing standards that if you just seem to be having a lot of stuff and you have hazardous conditions because you have an enormous amount of 
things that fall into that definition, then we can bring that to your attention and say, go to the ZBA and go through the process of licensure or cease and desist. Okay, I just was like, okay. I look at the transfer station. But the guy that just there. has two or three junk cars <laughs> outside of him, this car, and if he wants to say, well, I'm not a junkyard, I'm not trying to be a junkyard, then we can enforce the housing standards. If he says, I want to, I am a junkyard, well, then he has to become a legally licensed junkyard. Um, That's when his. I'm not sure there's anything in housing standards about junkyards. Well, not, not I'm just about talking about a guy with three or four. With just junk, 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 junk in his yard. Junk yeah, in his yeah, yard, for lack of a better term. Um, I mean, that's not permitted either. Is it, if, if, it, not what? It, it, let's say you have a guy out there that has junk in his yard. Cars, you know, parks. Yeah, yeah. And, but he's not trying to be a junkyard. Then, but we, we should be able to go out. I mean, there's. You can't just have three or four junk vehicles in your yard in Rollins, right. and car. I mean, there, although there are places that well, we've seen them. We try to, yes, we try to act on them as we come across them, but it's just like the guy in Rollins who right. kind of cleaned up his act well, for the most part. Um, it's a, it, the way we pursued him is not in here, but we just said it's a violation of zoning order because it's not an allowed use. It's not listed as an allowed use, so it's not permitted. And, but then if he was to reply, well, I'm not trying to be a junkyard. Then he I just have things in my yard. He has to clean up his act. Show, but show me the, but his response may be under what ordinance am I violating? We're saying it by definition, it's a junkyard. So that's why you want to have a definition Oh, we have to have, yes, yes. But does this tie too closely into it being an operating business where it says bought, sold, what if I'm just keeping stuff in my yard? Well, it says or. It, it says or. So you can get a Any one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. yeah. someone just wants to dig your heels in yeah. and dra drag out the process, it'd be nice to have yeah. either your junk, if he says I'm not trying to be a junkyard, yeah. I just have yeah. junk in my yard, Right. that we have recourse to. Yeah, we have. Um, I think we were stumbling a little because we had there's a provision in the zoning order that doesn't exactly say junk, I mean the table use rates, it doesn't exactly say junkyard. But it's what we use for the raw drum guy. And it just says open lot storage or sale of junk or salvage materials. So all that's lot storage, all we have covered that yeah. that's yeah. that covers that. So we're essentially saying then if we don't that's have a the definition. We have to go at someone who has the cars in the yard. Wouldn't it move us all at this point in time also to... I mean, if that's all you have to go after someone, yeah. you know, and... and we, would, we would, I think what we would do... I just think if someone wants to dig their heels in and, you know, really divide the words and nitpick and do interpretations of this and that and or... That's certainly going to happen. That way. That's certainly going to happen, gonna happen then we just have to get legal involved. Which we did. At our cost. Oh yes, always. But if it, it gets to the point, um, you know, it, it goes to the judicial thing, then we can ask for, uh, you know, attorney costs and all that other stuff. But the guy with Rawls, he just kept dragging it out. We kept sending him letters and all the rest of the stuff, and I'm sure it cost. Stuff but I'm legal. trying to learn from that. Well, for the, the next, next time. Going with with the gun and. I mean, no. what, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you, what do you, we, what kind of better process are you I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing it on the table there. It just seems like, you know, the guy that just wants to store things outdoors haphazardly, he's not buying, selling, trading, it's just his stuff. Well, we can point out to him that. come that long in the tooth, and as long as that one's drawn on, you know, there's a way wants, to better protect the situation from duplicating mm -hmm. itself. We could point out that the term junkyard does not include uses established entirely within any closed building. So if the guy wants to build a garage and put stuff in it, fine. Well, that, yeah, that takes it out of the public nuisance, you know, the, yeah. the, the problems yeah. with the abutters. And, but that's not the case with some people. Clearly. True. Then yeah. it's up to them to bring it into compliance. If we say it's a junkyard and they say it isn't, we say, our, until you go to a judge, we're right. Okay. It's up to the town. So, we'll, we, 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 we have a, so we can defend that position of saying that's an illegal junkyard. And that's, yes. Yes. that's why we're doing the cease and desist. Yes. 
clean it up. Yes. You know, like terms, you know, a, a program of compliance. But you don't think that reads, and I'm just throwing the questions out there, that reads too much as this being a business versus the guy that's not a business. I just I, the things in my yard. I don't think so. The word the bought, it's bought, the it's bought, it's bought, sold, exchanged, stored, built, packed, assembled, or handled. It, it's not just bought and sold. It could just, just be stored and packed, or stored and disassembled, or stored and handled. Any one of those. So it, it, it depends on the extent of which, um, the, the extent of which whatever it is is going on will determine um, whether or not it's egregious enough that the town would choose to take action over it. And the other thing, we, I mean, what we could do, I mean, just, if we um, don't include that new section and just include the new definition and put the definition in place of the uh, open lot storage, wouldn't the same thing? Because we do have the, the, uh, the license required by the select board. So it's always better to have regulations than put it in the license. Okay. Such was the advice of the municipal association. Uh -huh. okay, um, yep. So, so the minimum is 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 the that um, we, we definitely need the definition. But I would err on the side of putting the whole thing in the regulation because then it is not um, specific to one circumstance. But we're making a broad statement about how we feel about junkyards and how we want to regulate junkyards. So I think it's a good yeah. idea to hold, have a whole yeah. provision okay. in there. Um, if not, it's own separate. So do we want to get rid of B? Um, down the bottom of the first page. We would keep... I guess we would... No, we would get... We're not getting rid of the whole right, right, section. Right. We're getting rid of the permission, the conservation permission. Well, so if you remove it, then you're removing um, I underneath, or, or Roman numeral 1, which the whole six-month Yeah, which thing. is, but we want to keep the Roman 2, pursuant to, right? Yes, I think. So then I think the easier thing is to leave the whole thing in there and then to get, just to get rid of the Conservation Commission. Could you could you, could you word it so that the select board has the option to send you to the conservation commission at their if they think it's suitable, but from the not planning board, board but and at the, at yeah. The, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, the planning board could always say to the applicant, it needs review by the by the conservation commission. Because the thing is, the conservation commission is just advisory. I mean, yeah. they're not regulatory like planning, etc. So if the planning board said we need some input from conservation, it's certainly the option at if, any time. If you word it so that it could, the select board or the planning board has any has the license to have the review of any other board they see fit. I think yeah, we could do whatever we want. Is there a need to say it when the need when the when the, the ability is already there? I don't think so. Because if we just say it's already under the purview of, of either board, yeah. the select or the planning, yeah. Yeah. at any time. So if we just get, you know, receive a recommendation from the planning board and provide they read all the, we just, yeah. Then the planning board can ask at whatever time to, uh, in zone. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to add zoning in there. Before, first receive a, um, you have to add variance. Um, okay, have to have from ZBA, then recommendation from the planning board. Well, I, I wouldn't even say recommendation from the planning board. I would say site review. Review, yeah. I, yeah. Where'd you get these from? The airfield. <laughs> the guy sent it to me was from the Municipal Association, and we asked for him, and this is the one he sent. All right. So that's the one I used. Okay. I was, I was just... Um, so I go back to the Conservation Commission. So might it be related to the fact that there can be runoff from? Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at, at Dover's uh, Conservation and Commission, and it says uh, for the purpose of developing, protecting, and promoting the natural resources. So and for blah 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 the 
watershed resources of the city. So I'm thinking whatever municipality came up with this, because I know that one of the issues with the, with the current one is the issues of uh, effluent or whatever you want to call it going into the Seven Falls River. So isn't that the basis for why the Conservation Commission, the other municipality probably put that in there? I can only assume so. I mean, that's that's their purview. Take those kind of recommendations and reviews, and it is just. I mean, it's just whatever they come up with. It would just be a recommendation. But we're not giving up the right to have a review by any, by well, either the select or the planning board. Anyone can suggest that in the site review. I mean, all that's once again. Yeah. Well, and so maybe if it didn't say recommendation from. The Conservation Commission, um, I, I just, um, I can't imagine, that's a troubling word for me because the, 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 the okay. Conservation Commission isn't going to recommend that there ever be a junkyard, but at the no. same time they can make recommendations in ways that you implement a junkyard to make it yeah. environmentally better. Perhaps. So how about the junkyard is not legally operating, maybe licensed by the select board after first receive a variance from the zoning board. And so, then site review. Site review, yeah. From the planning board, which may include uh, review and comment by the conservation commission. So it's not a recommendation. Because yeah. if they if they come back and say we don't like it, it's still just advisory. Well, and I think it's worth getting their their opinion in writing. Yeah. Um, I looked at RSA 236 colon 122, uh, and the annual fee can be as high as 250. Why don't we pick 50 versus 250? That was one of the things I was going to suggest is that we need to review that 50 bucks. I mean, right now it's only, is it 25 or something? No, no, no. no. Is it 50? It's, I think it's 50 annually. It's, it's, I think, 250 for new ones or something, but. Um, yeah, for right. annual renewals, it's much lower. But I was going to suggest that we take that out of there because this can only be revised at the annual meeting, and instead oh, put something in there that you know fee right. set per RSA, you know, by the select board, and just give them the discretion to set the fees. To get the dollar amount, off. good idea. Okay, right, because the statute reads the annual license fee is not more than two fifty to be paid at the time the application is made annually thereafter. In the event of renewal. It might even be two fifty already. I haven't I haven't well, I, it's yes. it's oh, I think so. Let me see. I think it is two fifty, Caroline. Say what? I think two fifty is for the junkyard. It, it's I think it's more is in is that in line anyway? Um yes. It's not in regs, it's in their license. This says a license review. Know, this is this is a, a copy of uh, last year's. Yeah. License renewal fee of fifty dollars per year shall be assessed by the town. Okay, so then the new one it was a Right, so we're not gonna allow a new one. Well, right, but I think the new one is, is different and Maybe you got hit oh, with it. oh, oh, okay. So you've already increased it, is what you're saying? Um, I'm saying I don't know, is what I'm saying. Okay. But at least you figured that. But, at least but, you got us closer to that. Okay. But I think if we just so take we'll the take, dollar amount out, right, then right, right, right. at okay. least we're not locked into yep. that. We're not, we wouldn't be locked into 250. You're saying take the dollar amount out. So we could put it in as 250 if we want it to be, be 250, I suppose we could max it out. Um, I just thought that what ever you put in there, um, the law may change, but you're you're tying the hands of the select board to set the fees, um, which is fine. If you just want it to be 250, we can certainly do that. We could say up to 250 in this, and then let the select board. Well, but even if you say up to 250, if that RSA changes, or if it becomes pursuant to a different, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think I. I think you're right about if we get rid of the fee, 
from a zoning ordinance because yeah, it'd be uh, like we could have the fee in subdivision site review regs because that is entirely under the authority of the planning board to change. So and it doesn't require going to town meeting. Or you can give the select board the yeah. authority to set the fees. Yeah. Pursuant to RSA. To I think that's probably a good idea. Okay. I'm thinking about the, the testing fees that is mentioned here. What? The select board is, it says, uh, the discretion of the select board, appropriate investigations of each license oh. may be conducted prior. The fee, the testing fees that are being incurred, if it's so decided, is that something that the applicant would be responsible for providing? Or yes. The town? No, no. No. If we're saying you have to do this, we need to see the results, and they have to pay for it. Okay. And that's clearly understood. Oh, yes. If we, if we ask for them, they have to pay for them. Yes. Is it worth putting it in there, though, that, you know, at the applicant's expense or at the, um... We can put whatever we want. Yeah. I mean, it's... And why not? In other words, at the, at the end of toxic substances, comma, at the applicant's, at the sole expense of the applicant. Sure. Yeah. address things like non-permeable surfaces because that's all site plan, right? Right. So do we need to make a motion to say that no, we I want this to... I think if we can have a workshop. You can do it by consensus. You can really vote in a workshop. Ah, okay, fine. We get to be informal. All right, so I'm ready to move on. I'll just review, I mean, redo this, send it all out again. Thank you. So next is my thought, and I'm ready to have to be vigorously debated on this, <laughs> is my proposal for a new zoning district, Scenic Countryside. Okay. Scenic Countryside, so we would amend 3.1 to add Scenic Countryside. The purpose of scenic countryside in 3.2 would be to ensure the integrity of natural open spaces and scenic view sheds for the betterment of the community. And under 3.3 scenic countryside, I describe the area that it would uh, entail. Is that Bear Road? Is that? Bear Road? Yes, Bear Road. Mm -hmm. I like it. Very descriptive. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 it's probably overly wordy, but, you know, no, no, no. and I've looked at the way that the districts were yeah. described, and that's how I came up with it. Yeah. So, um, are cluster subdivisions What's allowed? That? Are cluster subdivisions allowed? And the scenic countryside? I don't know. And if not, how do we remove that? I guess we would have to um, revise the subdivision. Well, it's I don't know how they're tied. And we're in the zoning order, so clusters. And it's, in a, I think it just says in the... I thought it was just limited to the. What page are you looking at, Tom? Um, page 53 of the zoning ordinance, where 8.7 open space plus or something. Like Exception this 250 foot setback from 
Salmon Falls River. There are um, other brooks and rivers um, in town, and, and maybe um, they don't warrant 250 feet, but they flow into the Salmon Falls, and so they may warrant some kind of significant setback if that's your intention. All right, so you're suggesting that I would need to add other smaller water bodies. Well, like, so, you know, if, if you like that 250 feet to, from the Salmon Falls, I would just add, um, you know, some other number of feet from other named rivers. I wouldn't name the rivers, but from other, you know, rivers that have names. Like, if they're, if they're big enough to have a name, I don't, that, that's a silly qualification, but, you know, it, 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 find some other way to define other bodies that flow into or are a watershed into the San Paul's River. So I guess my point is that we are a, um, we're a stormwater community, an MS4 stormwater community, and all of our riverways are impaired, and they all ultimately flow into the San Paul's River. And so while it is noble to want to protect that river, um, the protection, even if to a lesser extent of any other river, will also ultimately um, assist in the protection of the San Paul's River. So set back from the Salmon Falls River and any in, in all waterways leading into the Salmon Falls River? Well, but at the same time, water. if you have such a huge setback from all rivers, you're going to have like, you know, 0.3 acres in the middle of countryside for the residential that is developable because there are other waterways back in there. So, so I don't mean for it to be overly burdensome either because, you know, essentially you're going to end up with, you know, not really allowing development at some extent if everything is being on the setback. It's just something for consideration. Okay. I'm happy to hear your thoughts. And um, I did find in the uh, table of use rate, permitted uses A14. Permitted use is residential open space area plus development. So it's allowed in UR, SR1, SR2, and CR. So it just won't be allowed in SC. If we, right. Okay. Um, the other thing is, in your special exception thing here, you've got, um, it does allow for single family homes, but the state law says that anywhere that you allow single family homes, you have to allow accessory dwelling units. Oh, accessory dwelling units? Yes. I have no problem with accessory dwelling units. Okay. Works for me. Well, I mean, give me some feedback on this proposal. I mean, people to say they hate it. They I like it. it. You yeah. like it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah keep them. You know about it? glass at. I mean, if, if we go down the Bear Road or my wife and I, we drive up, you know, we look at this open land and think, where else is this? Exactly. Exactly. And it isn't. So I think it's, I is think that, it's a great objective. Is that the same road where uh, for sale signs have been put up? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Oh. Yes. I, and I agree with the value of the open space, but, you know, I also... I think a little bit about, you know, landowners that they own property in these areas and, um, you know, leaving their rights to develop as they may see fit or, or, or um, but even that, even beyond that, um, sometimes land can be developed in ways that generate more taxation than other ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, clearly a big, a big thing in town is taxation. I mean, you know, we're, we're, paying, we're supporting ourselves here. And, you know, I, I just, I, you know, we, we all love Room 4 being, you know, a commercial right on that. But, I mean, I just, I have to really weigh in the fact that, you know, change is inevitable. And develop is inevitable. Development is inevitable. And, uh, why would you want that? 
I don't know, I would, I would have to give it some thought if I was to say yay or nay on my sure. No, I, um, you know, that's just where I'm coming from, too. No, I, I, I hear. Um, and actually, the, the idea behind this in part is to maintain value that I think that, um, and it's not prohibiting development, this would have to be meet certain uh, criteria here, and um, you know a uh, you know comparing my small uh, raised ranch on uh, on Karis Drive uh, produces a lot less taxation than a larger lot in the woodlands, um, the town. So, I don't know what I said, I'm happy to have this shot down or whatever. So. I, don't, I don't think it's about shooting it down. I think it's, it's about recognizing all the ways in which it's going to affect all the things that it's going to affect. It's, um, I think essentially the people who already live here would love it because it does protect the open space to, some, to a greater degree than what we have. Mm -hmm. um, but it also promotes gentrification because people have to afford a five-acre lot instead of affording a 15,000-foot school. Well, in this zone, it would have already been a two-acre lot. But so, so you're, you're making, you know, there's kind of an expectation, I think, in the way that this is written, that the homes that would be developed out in that area, should development one day happen, would be bigger, grander properties. Um, and you're still going to get a development, but you're just going to get a more spread out development with a five acre minimum and no cluster subdivision, and there's no need now to, or no provision for the cluster subdivision, so there's no benefit, if you see the benefit of cluster subdivision with that conservation land set aside. So um, it doesn't help with the regional housing crisis. But, who, but I, I, I'm anticipating this argument from you, but how many people have, look, look, let's look at Oldenburg Lane. What are the houses they're starting in? Oh, like 400, 450, so or something like that. So who is coming to the town and saying, we want to build houses for $150,000? Well, for, you're for absolutely people. right. You're so absolutely who's doing right. That? Well, nobody's doing that because, you know, it is the nature of development that people will always develop to the highest potential of the land and to the highest profit of the developer. I, I'm just putting it out there that there is a dark side. And let's think about like workforce housing. Like no one, let's say we, we, we create, I don't know if you need a, a zone for workforce housing, but no one's going to build workforce housing in Rollinsford because there's no public transportation. Well, and they're still not, even if there was, they're still not going to build workforce housing because it's not as profitable as what you have here. Or, so, or, or even like a cluster subdivision. You can sell more homes in a cluster subdivision than you could with this. So I'm not saying that, that you're absolutely right that already we're not the place for that necessarily, but I just wanted to point that out that it's not the point of a cluster subdivision, whether you like it or not, and we have it in our regulations, is that it allows for a denser use of the land in order to allow open space so that you have less sprawl. So I'm not saying that this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just sort of exploring all of the other perspectives about it. And so my only thing, you know, like I said, I think that most people who currently live in Rollinsford would favor this over what we already have. But it does disable some people's property rights to some degree because you are diminishing their development potential. Um, so I think it's just worth having a, um, just dispersing the, we already disperse information as much as we can. And we'll have a public hearing anyway, but I think it just really requires as much public input as possible to be sure that it aligns with public values. Because, you know, I would be hesitant to make a zoning change when our when our master plan is so out of date anyway. Except that I do think that you're right that probably most people would want this and agree with this, and it does align with the old version of the master plan. And how does the uploading of the master plan bill come in? It is miserable. I <laughs> okay, so, you. I mean, and again, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but no, no, we, can, but I can't, we yes. can't stop uh, doing things because we're waiting for this map. And I'm not trying to put it on you or whatever, but 
it's it's an obstacle that I don't see progress being made on. No, no offense, or I can't see putting off uh, proactive thoughts because because of that. I, I, I agree. I just think you need to we need to compensate for that with you know the loudest public hearing one can have is all. And you know zoning ordinances by zoning by its very nature restricts property owners. I mean that's that's the basic. And this is something that comes from public hearing, and it can be shot down. You know, it could be it could be my my little idea here it could be shot down in flames. And I'm not suggesting that I'm right on this. And I think and I anticipated Kevin's comments and yours. And but I'd like to throw it out there for the I'd like to put it on for the public hearing. And you know, and maybe I'm going to be proven to be all wet behind the ears or wherever the uh, the expression goes. I'm just curious, um, like. Is the process to create a new zoning district as simple as proposing one and putting it down on paper? Well, it has to go through. It's a, it's a revision of the it's zoning ordinance. Yeah, is that like it? Any other. Yeah, if you want to add. So you have a public hearing oh, yeah. and you vote on it? Yeah. So there's not like surveying that needs to happen or anything like that? It goes through all the hearing processes, but there's not like what needs to happen? Like, you know, survey, you know, survey of the land. Oh, or oh, oh like no, no, that. no, no, no. You do and I was actually surprised at how basic the, if you look at yeah. uh, the, the the definitions, how basic they really are. Yeah. Um, this is your copy, by the way, Caroline, I'm borrowing. But, but like the zoning map is, is so constructed. I mean, it just, it just seems, I mean, do yeah, any of these, yeah, do yeah. these, any of this proposed zone take away land from other existing zones? I mean, it does, doesn't it? It would, yes. So, I mean, you're like, it just seems crazy to me a little well, bit that it's like so, I like... It, it's a little more complicated, you're right, that, I mean, we would say this, but the amendment in the ordinance would have to say, you know, we're changing anything in whatever, the S1 to this, and so yeah, there's, there's a little more work, but you just have to identify it. I mean, that's something, it doesn't have to be surveyed. It's, we just have to identify the new boundaries um, and the new um, zones. And we would be creating um, new nonconformities, which is not necessarily, you know, a bad thing, but just to note that whatever pre-existing structure is likely sure. to Meet these new setbacks. No, there'd be a, there'd be a lot of non conforming uses. Yeah. That's about happening. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 That's part of the story. Sure. So I would I would like to see um, if you would. There's a zoning map in the back of that, and if mm -hmm. you wouldn't mind hot, like drawing what you think this represents. And I actually tried to. I couldn't hop on the town internet. Uh, sure, I mean, I, I, mean, you don't, I, I don't like draw it on this, on your booklet, but... It's fine. I mean, uh, is the... Uh, that's awfully small anyway. It's kind of hard to... Yeah. Yeah. Right, so so yellow is the country residential, and I think it, it seems as though you're, you would be, everything you're proposing is within what is currently the yellow country residential zone. Yes, I think so. I think, uh, I'm just trying to think. This is so, yes. so tiny. Well, so, if that's the case, then why don't we just rename CR to so, country well, residential? Well, that's true, too. Well, no, because this goes well beyond, I mean... I'm carving out a smaller, a much smaller oh, section okay. within. So so I'm so not taking oh. this whole yellow okay. and making it scenic countryside. Okay. I'm taking basically. I, I, I can't even quite tell on this what I, where I'm doing this. I almost think that's a better thing to look at, even though it's no. older. No, it's a much bigger one than Caroline's office. I'm fitting with a, on wheels. And I don't 
know how to stick it up on a wall, but at least you can look at something bigger. You can see street names. So here's Bear Road, right? And here's Roberts, mm -hmm. and there's General Sullivan in Pinch Hill, Robert of uh, Route Four. So you mentioned this intersection here with Roberts Road and Route mm -hmm. Four. So I think we're talking. So were you talking about like you know this strip? But you mentioned something also about Sligo, uh, rather about um, the river, Salmon Falls. So were you talking about like everything from Bear Road over? But well, see, I, I sort of wanted to do something along, you know, the the scenic, the view sheds there is what I wanted to protect. Okay. So I, mean, I think I think I've got to describe my boundaries better. Well, yes, but I think it would be really important to have some kind of visual representation for people Absolutely. so that they can see oh, yeah. what's changing. So when you were mentioning General Sullivan, you didn't, you weren't including it, right? No. Yeah. I just was trying to do an endpoint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not really taking anything out of any other zone other than the CR. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Well, so I guess I'm still trying to understand, are you just trying to take, like, this intersection and, and do something like, you know, some, some, you know, distance on either side? Because like you say, it's about the scenicness, but then you're totally breaking up that zone and leaving pockets of stuff that's not in that zone, but then you also mentioned the river, so I'm, I guess I'm still struggling to picture what's changing. So I, I guess I had thought about, and again, I only worked on this kind of here at 6 o'clock tonight, is something like carving out areas that, almost like a cross, if you will, in the middle yeah. of the country residential. Because the problem with that is that, though, you know, you need, you need road frontage to develop. And so you're taking all the road frontage, which means you really, even though you're not directly impacting these areas that are not along the roadways, you're, you're indirectly very much affecting them because they don't have road frontage. Although I guess you could still build a road into them if you were going to anyway. How about if, you, if we consider just doing CR to three acres? What the difference? And I think it would be much simpler if you did something like divide this and yeah. take everything like over there. Yeah. Um, even though that doesn't protect, you know, an area that I, I would imagine you're trying to protect. But um, I think it simplifies the defining of it and the understanding. You know, if you do something like what you're suggesting, then every single person has to like figure out how how far, you know, they, they have to, it, it, it sort of increases the burden in figuring out what their zone is. You're splitting lots more properties into multiple zones than if you divide it by the streets. I think, I think we then get back to, to Sarah's concern is that, like, you wouldn't want to run it through somebody's lot. It'd have to be on the lot line. Well, that's, that's what, what I mean. Saying. That's why yeah. I'm thinking that if you, if you follow, like, streets and have streets be boundaries, then you're not so much breaking up lots, but you're taking entire lots. But then you're restricting your intent, in a, you know. I mean, I don't, I could, I could live with a smaller, uh, I, I, again, this is just an idea that I, yeah. Yeah. I've never. Uh... The other thing is, even if you minimized it somewhat, like if you took everything from these streets over plus you know, 400 feet or something, if, you know, whatever you could do to minimize the, the cutting through lots with a so, zone change. So, see, we did Old Mill Lane to, let's say we did that. We decided to do, uh, well, I want to go down here, though. Well, then, okay. So, so what if you took... What if you 
took Old Mill Lane and, and went entirely that way. So Old Mill Lane entirely this way. Yeah, yeah and it would include that too. Sure. But, and then, but you're saying leave the north side of Portland Avenue alone. Well, that's the compromise. Is that is that you lose? Well, like, sure. I mean, I, and I I would yeah. be willing to do, consider a smaller change than that. I guess. Although that's one of the more important. Uh, well, I, I guess that's my concern: is that whatever you're doing, you're, you're trying to protect something, and people. You know, I think there needs to be public input on what are we trying to protect. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. That's why we have the public here meeting. Here, well. Right? Right, so um, I, I think it's just, I just think it requires an extensive public engagement, not even just public well, hearing, but a public <coughs> engagement kind of process over something that's so significant. Yeah, I, I think it's be pretty clear that this wouldn't be a, a, you know, a one and done thing. I mean, you bring it up and then at the public hearing, it's gonna, I'm sure a lot of people are going to trash it. It has to be revised. I mean, I don't think it's just going to happen, it's, especially now, between now and, what is it, January, is it ahead be? Um, we have to, our, our meeting on the 9th is the public hearing, and we have to have the warrant finalized very soon after that. So yeah, th there's not a big window for discussion and revision. Yeah. We have Monday the 13th, don't we? So, so we have Thursday the 9th. Um, Thursday the 9th is the next planning board. We moved it to Thursday. Yeah, but wasn't there, what's, when's the public meeting? Well, the, so that is the public, so it's the, a public hearing followed by um, the planning board meeting where we do have some cases on the agenda. So we're just starting with the public hearing. On um, the 9th? On the 9th. <coughs> and then the 13th? I don't know anything about the 13th. Now I'm confused. I just, I, have, I just have it in my note for the 13th. Maybe it's a school board or... I don't it might know. be a school board, but typically there are not town meetings on Monday nights other than select board because the select board typically meets on Yeah, I, I don't want it. But they're, what they're saying is they want, they want uh, as I understand, they want roads as the boundaries. Oh, okay. Is what they're saying, right? It'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. It'll make it a lot easier. You know, we don't have enough time. If it's between now and then, you know, when the Warner article, I mean, this this is something I think that would take review and. I think whatever you do, you're going to have public input that you know that it's a great idea, but it should be somewhere else. Or that um, you know there are those in town who who would rather have lots of houses, um, yeah. believe it or not. Um, mm -hmm. I you know I just think it warrants a lot of discussion about what area is it really because all of that is worth protecting for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Some of it is is less visible than other parts of it, and so yes, there you know with the scenic part, the scenic countryside, you know there is something to be said for how that would inform where one would put it, but um, I think it's complicated. It's not a this year thing. Um, well, I don't think, it, it's not that it can't, you know, I would say it probably wouldn't get well defined for, in time for this March. That doesn't mean necessarily that we couldn't try if you wanted to try, but I think I, I would just not. I would just caution your expectations and understand that it's probably going to be a longer, drawn-out process that might inform the following March. So, what would be the harm? And let's think about what would be the harm of starting. So, we got to start a process. It's a long process. So, let's say we put something on for pub, the public hearing, and if nothing else, doesn't that move it along? Even if it doesn't. Well, right. It starts a conversation, and that's where it starts. Is a conversation. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the other thing is to know that I think about it. Isn't it the state law that if you post a change, then people can't come in, even though it's just posted and not enacted. Uh, developers can't come in and say, yeah, but I still want to do what's allowed by the CR zone. 
You know what I'm saying? Like we would post this area is going to be scenic countryside. So it freezes. Um, yes, that's exactly yes, yes. I think so. That's dangerous. Huh? That's kind of dangerous. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure. Well, so we have to be well. Okay, so while that's interesting and compelling, and some people would really love to hear that, I, I also you know caution us to be obstructionists. Um, Pick us out. <laughs> I think it's worth conversation. And I, I would propose bringing it forward to just see how people feel about it. Yeah. But I would encourage you to identify what area. So why can't we... So, so Tom is going to refine the language for the junkyard between now and the public hearing. Why can't I we put it on to the public hearing and I refine the language? I think that's the great. The description between do I, do I have to have... Do I have to say today what the exact boundaries of scenic countryside would be? No, I would say, but just be ready to define it and to defend your definition, but okay. also to be able to, you know, put a colored piece of paper right sure. over the spot that you're designating so that people can visually understand. All right, so I would like to do that. I want to start the process. All Even right. if it doesn't succeed, I want to start the process. Couldn't you pick an area and then in the future? Expand that if you needed to. Sure, I mean, the, 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 everything can be always be amended. Yeah. yeah, but I think it'd be easier to go the other way. Yeah, that's true too. Ask for too much and then say, okay, I'll narrow it down to the professional negotiator. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was president of my union for over 14 years. I guess so, you were. So <laughs> pick this whole area yeah. and then scale it back. Well, I'm going to come up with, with a better description. So, all right. So, do we need to yeah. say? Do we you know, need? To I think the I think the consensus of the of the group. Do I? Have, you know, I think the consensus of the group is have at it, and we'll see what okay. you come up with for the next. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Yeah, propose the Thank you for taking the time to be thoughtful and to write that up. And I appreciate your thoughtfulness. In well, I just wish, I, I feel, I mean, I wish I had something on impact feeds also, but I have just been out straight, and it's, it's a terrific, I don't have to make excuses for what it is. It's, it is, that's... So real. let me ask you this. So do I have to actually have impact fees? I have not had to even put anything up. Can I still put out for public hearing and come to some language? Between now and then, um, I don't think you really have to worry about the impact fees are already in the zoning order. Okay, it's the amounts and okay. and figuring all that stuff out. So that's that's more just procedural. That doesn't yeah. have to do with revising the. We don't need to do a warrant. That's so, the warrant. That's just part of our. Okay. It's so in other words, I think we can implement that at any time. Okay. Yeah. Once we have good forms and process. Okay. And administrative office. staff. Well, there. Yeah. What'd you say? Administrative staff. Yes. Yep. Okay. Finance department. Establish a whole new. <laughs> the office. Sure. You live in town. Yes. That just happened. Yeah. And know how to manage it and, and establish it. Yeah. As far as the process, have you know some policies that help us understand how to do it. Okay. But that, that's not reinventing the wheel. Lots of other communities do that, so it shouldn't be... No, no, I, I agree. I agree. And, yeah. uh, well, it is certainly a lift to figure out the paperwork, to figure out how to administer it. And it, um, I, I think that still the bigger hurdle is the actual administration of it. But that's not to say it's not worthwhile. So but I you see, if we, if we increase the junkyard fee from 50 to 250, there's little <laughs> things. We increase the operating budget we have. And increasing the <laughs> annual fee for using the transfer station. Well, that's a transfer station is, is that's a whole other thing. I'm just trying to be forward. There's a huge benefit to having impact fees. I mean, it certainly help with you oh. know, growing your infrastructure. Absolutely. I mean, it'd be great to have them. Oh, just, so what's the next step? To handle it properly. So what is the next step for me bringing that forward? I I, I go out and first, uh, I would say find hire another from another town. And, and just sort of take it and cut and paste. Now, not, not literally yes. cut and paste, but take their format and then bring it in here and change amounts and... Yeah. Well, right. So I guess 
I guess what I would want to know, or when Dover says that the fire impact fee is two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, for example, how do they come up with that number? It has to be based on something. So we're going to have to do it's, the same. I think it's it's spelled out how. Is it is it down yeah. to that? You know, you you have to prove it. And sure, so, no, I'm not trying to be so, arbitrary. I, well, no, 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 I understand. I just, you know, if if we are going to carry that out, then we in the office need to know how to figure that out. So, so do you take, you know, you're going to need, you know, the 60 percent of another fire truck, and so you take the cost of that piece of equipment, and then you divide it by, you know, I'm I'm not really sure. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so we need to know how we come up with numbers. Uh, how we do the math to figure out what exactly is the impact. And then once you know what the impact is, how do you divide it among, how do you make a fee out of that? Because, you know, you don't know if you're going to get 200 houses out of that subdivision or 50 or 12, because every developer will have a different idea of how to approach that. So, so what do you, you know, and so every, it's not even a big development that gets the impact fees, but it's any, any, any building permit for new construction. So. Right. So it has to fit with whatever might come in for new construction. So, so how do we wrap our heads around what are we charging that we can do across the board? Yeah, the planning board has to adopt such studies or methodologies and related fee schedules that provide for a process or method of calculating proportionate share. It's, I mean, it's outlined. It doesn't say specifically, you know, Right, we've got to do it, is yes. all. And, and what so, section yeah. is that? Uh, it's uh, section 13.2 in the zoning ordinance. It starts on page 86. Okay. All right. Well, we've very patient, and I appreciate that. Um, am I allowed to correspond with Tom, and to, if I come up with some language and say, am I allowed to do that? You Absolutely, that yes. Purpose? Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you, because... It, it, I, I agree that it's worthy of discussion and investigation, and we, we don't really know how heavy the lift is until we start moving in the direction we go. So, well, I'd rather be on the side of trying to anticipate change than versus being yeah, change sure. happen. And change is going to happen. I do recognize it. It's good. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for your patience for coming out on your evenings away from your family. I have a question. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. So it's a whole different um, question now. <laughs> um, about some of the cases earlier this year that uh, there have not been a history of... Um, I was thinking of Dr. Bennett's uh, property where there was a, there's a large building and um, I guess it looks like a barn, but so far as the history of it, the permits or what was going on there, it doesn't exist, or, you know, it's just very old. And I was wanted to suggest that there could be, like, a cutoff time of, um, of looking for older, older information, um, because um, it just seemed as though some of the uh, progress, well, just using that, for example, I mean, there was others, that um, maybe the applicant wanted to move ahead, but um, uh, they had to, you know, uh, find out about the permits of that large building, and uh, which really, uh, I think the person went ahead and, and built what he wanted to build. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I know that's exactly what happened. And, yeah, so to have, like, a uniformity of, uh, um, uh, I'd say, well, the number of years have gone by that, I hate to say, well, we have to move on, and with the applicant's um, information. So what are, you, are you suggesting that something didn't go the way it could have gone because, you know, that you have a new owner of a property where something didn't happen the way it should have, and so that there were implications for the new property owner that perhaps shouldn't have been? Is that what you're suggesting? Oh, that with the new property owner, I'm just, it did happen that there was a little delay, but it was like not necessarily delayed. It just seemed as though um, 
just a few examples of the records are so old or did not exist. And um, I was just hoping that we could just have, a, um, uh, say, a cutoff of uh, time of, uh, well, we didn't know what happened from then on, and then move on. Hope I'm making a bit of sense. <laughs> I, I think you know one of the things though on the on the barn, for instance. Yeah. In this whole process, that barn is coming down. Yeah. So, okay. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of mute point then. In that, in in that, that case. case. But I, yeah. I see what you're saying. If uh, I'm trying to think of an example here. Nothing. Well, most of the reason that that barn came up in discussion through that subdivision proposal is because the applicant wanted to, at first, infringe upon the river setback as much as that building already did, but in um, a different way. The river, right? Right. To do with the river. Right. And so the problem with that argument is that um, it was never allowed to happen in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we do keep building permits. Okay. When people file building permits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I but guess. in a sense, the, the, the sins of the seller are not the problems of the buyer, though. But they are not the enablement either. Oh, 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 oh right. They, they do not grant permission. Right. Right. Do not grant permission to the new. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think the sins of the seller, I mean, if the buyer inherits that, and we say, this happened, for instance, this happens all the time. People finish their basements, then they sell a house, then the new guy wants to sell his house, and at this particular time, the bank comes in with an appraiser and they said, there's no permit for finishing the basement. It's that owner's responsibility. It's not the guy that did it. So you do, you know, if you assume ownership. Yes, if they, uh, that's establishing the value of the collateral for the, for the money. It's not sure. Yeah, if you assume um, ownership, you assume responsibility. Well, the, the, the buyer would have to bring into compliance any errors of the, of the property at, at the time of the sale. Or no, the seller would. The, the, the so you say, I, I finished my basement 20 years ago would. and just did it. And then 10 years ago, I sold it to you. Now, the banks are much more uh, focused on this kind of stuff. So you want to sell it, and the appraiser says, yeah, but it has a finished basement and there's no record in the town. So you, the owner, the current owner, have to rectify it. And so that's what I mean by correcting, correcting yes, the, yes, the yeah. deficiency, it would, sure. It would be whoever owns it at the time it is discovered. Right. But chances are that would come up at time of the, the sale transaction. Lately, yes. I because mean, the tax part of you and the gross living area, the beach yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I'm just thinking like what you were saying, if, if, if this, whatever the situation is with the property, whether it's... I guess you could, well, I'm just trying to think of, yeah, yeah, I can't think of it. you know, encroachments on, on setbacks or things like that. If, if the buyers, I would think at the sale transaction, that's going to come to light. If, if, you know, once a survey is done or... Exactly, yeah. We yeah. There were circumstances, I mean, way back where people would build too close to a lot line because we never required certified plot plans after construction. So it would come to light at the sale, and then we say, oh, you have to go to the zoning board for variance for that setback. And the zoning board's not going to say no, and it's you have to sit on your house. Yeah. So, there have been, we, you know, we use certified plot plans, and the uh, zoning ordinance, uh, I'm sorry, the zoning regs have been changed so that there's now a provision called equitable waivers, so that if we find this circumstance where the house is too close, it's not a variance, you can go for an equitable waiver saying that this happened however long ago, and you have to make sure that it's, you know, it wasn't uh, done on purpose and... Right, no malice. Yeah. Yes. I just, so I think that we've got situations like what you're concerned yeah. is to cover it, because in most cases it would be most yes. divulged at time of the transaction. Oh, yeah. okay. Place, whether it's a vaccine yes. value, it's, it's, a store store. it's an appraiser. Hey, yeah, I back up to the <laughs> Thank God we got that on tape. By the way, I have an ID on my phone, it's sexy mom, it's terrible, it's terrible, sorry. Yeah. Oh, you got the light flashing at the same time? Well, yeah, you know why I did that? It's because, you can say it that way because, um, occasionally I put in very long nights. I only get like three hours sleep. And uh, the flashing 
And sometimes I'm bored the next day and I'm worried about oversleeping. And I've never overslept for a court hearing. But the flashing light is an extra, gives me a sense of comfort at night. Comfort? I don't even be alive. Where's Sexy Mama in the mornings when you're going to get up? Well, no, she actually, on an average, she leaves more order than I do. <laughs> I guess I have to change that at some point, but I've, it's been here right here on my phone for so long. I just have a couple of things here. All right. All right. <laughs> and as Zoe Lawrence, we talked about other little changes, and um, Caroline mentioned the painting thing. Yes. So. That does say, um, it kind of excludes painting, you know what I mean? But I Would you mind be... reading that paragraph yeah, for I mean, everybody? No, no, no. It's under enforcement. Yes, page 84. No person uh, about the permits. No man-made change to improved or unimproved real estate, including but not limited to buildings or other structures, mining, dredging, filling, grading, paving, excavation, drilling operations shall be commenced until a separate permit has been obtained. This is board of selectmen. I mean, it's or designate. No, I, I have an old one, I guess. Oh, uh, yes, you do. Okay. okay. So anyway. Except that maintenance, painting, and repairs to existing structures that merely replace existing structural materials shall not require a building permit. So it doesn't really say if you paint, it does require a permit. It says... It, it, it shouldn't you be your 50, Yes, it, exactly. If we just delete that one word, I think that... Can you, can you say again what section and all that? Oh, sure, sure. Section 13.1. And it's the, the first paragraph. So if we just delete, except that maintenance and repairs to existing structures, painting, we just delete painting. Right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that covers it. I think that covers it. And um, those, I just want to, I, I guess I just want to, I, I think it's worth talking about existing structures, you know, replacing windows. Um, replacing things that are already there. You replace your deck boards. Um, if it's still more than fifteen hundred dollars, you need a building permit. Well, that was is something that I was going to. It said you want to increase that. Um, that dollar amount is pretty low. Well, well, that's not even the point, and we can discuss that. I, that's worth discussing too. But I'm, I'm, it's more about: Do you really need a building permit for something that's already there? No, except if it's a structural change. Structural because, changes, yes. I just okay, mean, okay. you know, it seems as though the way it's already written, if you replace your windows, if you replace your roof, you yeah. know, th those don't really have value as far as assessing we, is right, concerned. It's right, just right, fees. Right. So there are there, most, as far as I know, most communities don't require permits to right. re roof. Right. I, I, I guess I just would like to see us align more with what's reasonable according to what other communities require. And other communities seem to not require replacement of existing things. And some, some certainly do. You know, but yeah, we seem yeah. to be more restrictive. Yeah. yeah. Like windows, for instance. Um, you could do a one-for-one -one swap, you know, with the size of a window. But the energy code requires now, you know, double pane glass, et cetera. So if you take out an old window, and even though the value of that one window might be less than the 1500 a permit still is necessary because it impacts something in the building code. It, same thing with structural. I, I mean, if you have joists that don't support the required live load, and you want to replace them, the new ones have to. So if you're going to replace a window that's ancient, the new window has to meet the current range. Mm -hmm. Can you see how a window would get replaced and not meet current regs? I mean, I suppose it's possible that you like go find a, a you know a pretty yeah. used one from the yeah. restore or something, but you know. Yes, and you're right. 
It happens all the time, and nobody gets them. And well, it's not even that nobody gets them. I don't want to condone bad behavior. I think it's just more about you know if if we need it because we need to verify code. You know that's yeah. worthwhile. If yeah. you know for, for any reason that we need to verify code, that's worth getting a building permit. But otherwise, if it's not structural or otherwise, you know, re relative to code, it then, just seems to be about fees and it's burdensome. Then yes, I agree with you. If this doesn't relate to code, then yes. So how can we revise the language so as to? I think we increase the dollar amount because if you're going to say take up your deck boards and replace them, that's not really structural. It's just maintenance. You know they're old, they're split. You want to put. You know, take a break and lumber and put down pressure treated. It would be difficult to do that, depending on the size of the deck, of course, for 1500 bucks. So I think if you increase this dollar amount. Well, should we, but I guess my point is more shouldn't we just allow people to replace their deck boards? And they might have a really big deck or a small deck, but they're replacing something that already exists that's not structural. Well, we don't want to, I think, get into that kind of description. We get the language is too. Too, yeah, too, too, we, you can do this, you can't do that, you can, that's why the dollar amount kind of cuts across the whole thing. Would you the dollar amount kind of problem is, is, is a better way to do it because it's, it's a finite number, it doesn't apply, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter how big your deck is or what quality material you're using, Yeah. it's just yeah. a dollar amount, it's, yes. it's unbiased. So, so what would the dollar amount? What do you suggest the dollar amount be? Twenty five hundred. Okay, I can see that. Okay. So we give her the painting and we increase the cost to twenty five. Was that in the same section? Yes. Okay. Same paragraph. Yes. Okay. Um, we haven't really been talking about this, but we don't seem to have a definition of a butter. And um... right, I I agree with what Sarah wrote in that in that email. We just modify them. To go with the state. Did everybody get that? I didn't see that. Oh. Did you know how to do you know I how did a definition for an empire? <laughs> Not in zoning. We do in site and, and okay. um, subdivision regulations. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some discrepancies on the applications that I think could be easily clarified if we just included the butter. Right. And we have an industry standard description. There's yeah. a state. State right there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we should definitely be, be doing that. Although, you can, I mean, I'm pretty sure Dover has a wider area when it comes to site review. You know, they figure, or subdivisions, they figure more people will be impacted than direct the butters. So they do have a radius of two or 300 feet. So, I mean, it's not, it's not illegal to have it, but if we should be consistent. We have it in one, but... Well, you just said not to be consistent. What? So, so you just made an argument for having a bigger radius for subdivisions because they have a bigger impact. Oh, I mean, yeah, consistent from the ordinance to the application. Well, okay, except that to what application, though? Because subdivisions, you know, more more abutters than... Yeah. than I'm just saying that whatever it says in the subdivision rank should be on the subdivision application. But, but what about site plan, though, I guess? Whatever it says in site range to be on the site review application. It says, I reviewed both of them today, and they both go with the state definition of a butter within the within the regulations. Oh, so we should add that to zoning, mm -hmm. and then it's consistent, that right? Way. Yeah. And then change the application to meet that same. Yeah. Yeah. But the application, I mean, that should just be administrative thing, right? You know? Well, I, I approached Charlie about changing the zoning application. He was not comfortable with doing it without like a public hearing. Like he wasn't sure what the process necessarily. Oh, oh. But if you I changed it in the zoning ordinance, then I think you could change the application because it relates exactly to that. Yeah. Yeah. I looked up a butter this afternoon for New Hampshire. Yeah, I mean I have the RSA right here. Yeah. yeah. The actual RSA, and I'll send everybody the email. We we had just discussed at the last meeting, you, the three of us having a, a thing about it. But yeah, there's like um, RSA six seven two three is is the definition of a butter. It's very clearly pointed out. 
So, may I see that? Absolutely. And that language is used in the site and subdivision regulations. So, so it doesn't give a distance, distance though. No, it does not. Yep. At one point it did, but when it was last For reach change, amended, right. it, it went to the current definition. Because I did a little research on the history yeah. of it, why our applications might have those distances. And past versions of that definition from the state were inclusive of a yeah. footage difference. So we just haven't kept up with it. Right. Yeah. Right. So can we include a distance and still be that? That I don't know. I don't know if we would be. I, I think. Could we? I mean, I think we can. And, and just keep it consistent, though. Yes. Okay. So is that two hundred feet? If you want it to be. Well, if, if I mean, isn't that what subdivision and site plan say? Is two hundred feet. Um. So site plan says 300. Uh, subdivision goes with the current definition. Um, conditional use is 300 feet. So why does it go Special the exception to go uses the, the current New Hampshire state definition and then variance uses 200 feet. So it's like not consistent anywhere. Not consistent already. But if we do add a number, then that has to be included in the zoning ordinance, and then we have to amend site review and subdivision regs. So what if we said 300 feet or, you know, I guess you never have to say that because this, the state law will always supersede. Um, I'm just concerned about putting in a number and then the law changes again and then we're not growing. There's something to be said about saying whatever whatever the state law is because then there's, as it changes... There's a lot to be said for that, I think. And that in and of itself is con you know consistent except that it doesn't give a distance. It's just the definition, which means you've got to actually be thoughtful, not just draw a radius, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, but it's pretty, right? Whatever it's, number we came up with. Well, that's the other thing, is a number is inherently arbitrary. So so how do you figure that out? Like that you're looking at a map and you have to figure you know, you have to like visually look. You can't just throw out a radius in a computer program and collect the data with the state. Well definition. It's basically your property, anything that touches your property, or anything that's like across a street or a stream, it's right. not its not actually that yeah. complicated. Right. So then what if we changed everything to be that? Although, yeah. is, that, is, that, is that broad enough for something that could be as impactful as a subdivision? I suppose if it's a big enough property, then, right. then it just means you have more abutters. Sure. You have more abutters. Do other people have thoughts? I mean, I would think like in towns like Dover, where there's more of an urban compact, the the distance thing would make more sense. In in Rollinsburg, where it's more rural, you're likely to hit all of the yeah. the people who are most affected by you by, by hitting your. And probably others. 200 feet is in most cases exactly that anyway. Yeah, I mean the properties here are a lot bigger. So, so what if we changed it to read? The state definition. I think it's the safest way to go. Sure. Yeah. It always will be. Yeah. I have one last little thing. Pretty close. We identified under the special exception appeals on the Oak Street property and. Not Marsh on how Road. Yes. Where. A special exception as provided in this ordinance may be permitted only if the Board of Adjustment makes the following findings of fact. And number one is the proposed site is found to be an appropriate location for such a use by the planning board. So those people had to file the application right. with the planning board, and you guys had to say, yes, it's an appropriate location. You know, the residential zone is appropriate to have a residential zone. 
-hmm. What does that really accomplish? Right. Yes. So I agree. So you, you remember this, Kevin, right? I do remember that. It was uh, right. So I, I have no problem with the idea of. So for the newer members of the board, this what this report that Tom is talking about is that people have come in and just get this almost meaningless approval from us, and then go in front of the ZBA where the real action was. Right. And I have no problem getting rid of that. Well, not only that, but I think worse, it sort of um, artificially, well, in one of those cases, you know, the attorney on behalf of the applicant sort of argued the, the approval as, as saying, hey, why yes, you went exactly. to the planning board. Right, I agree. Yeah, I agree. really kind of set the property on up for a huge disappointment. Yeah. I think it leads to some false hope. Yeah. And it was, a, it was kind of a yes, waste of time. Yes, it's kind of an implied consent thing. It's kind of a waste of time. So yes, the implied consent. We just so what, what section? Okay, that's uh, um, section 11.3.2.1. And we just want to delete by the planning board. Because it still has to be found to be an appropriate location. Are you going to strike that? You're going to write that up? Is that what Sarah's doing? I yes. know. I just read I, the same thing. I right. If you could just send me your notes, if you would. I, I'm going to put all this in. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll more just so that we okay. more eyes are... Yeah. Yes, I just want to make sure that we're watching the yeah. language. Yeah, like, okay. I, I need it on. Got it. Okay. I know. It's not good. Thank you. I'm good. All right, well, thank you all for coming in during the busy house and holiday season. I thank you all very much. <laughs> <laughs>